quiet. Well, good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today. Uh, I'm Mark Talvin. I'm the CEO of the University of Rochester Medical Center. And uh, we're here for a very exciting announcement. But before I ask Dr. Freeberg to share today's uh, exciting news, I would like to uh, thank Congressman Joe Morelli for joining us. I think uh, it's probably safe to say that the medical center and the university has had no greater friend uh, for their educational research and clinical missions uh, than Congressman Morelli, first as, as a, in the legislature and now, now in the, in, in the uh, House. Uh, so I thank you for all you've done. Uh, I'm not sure we would be here without you. Uh, and so I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Steve Dewhurst, our Vice Dean for Research uh, at the School of Medicine and Dentistry. Peter Robinson, the Vice President for Government and Community uh, Relations. And uh, the co-leaders of our cancer control team, Karen Mustian and, and Gary Morrow. Unfortunately, Gary can't be with us today, but really has been the heart and soul of a program you'll hear more about, and, and has done so much for this institution, and, and uh, will continue to do so much. Uh, the Wilmot Cancer Institute is not only the largest and most advanced provider of clinical care to cancer patients in upstate New York, but it really has emerged as one of the largest providers of cancer care in the country. It includes 92 inpatient beds across the street, uh, 13 outpatient locations across Rochester, Finger Lakes, and the Southern Tier. It cares for more than 17,000 patients each year, including roughly 6,000 new cases each year. It is the home of, to the region's largest blood and marrow transplant program, and offers a large portfolio of clinical trials and advanced therapies that often are not available elsewhere in New York State, and in some cases, like CAR T-cell therapy, are available only at a few sites in the country. Nationally, Wilmot and the university are also recognized as a leader in cancer research. For example, studies done at the University of Rochester scientists laid the foundation for the entire field of radiation oncology. Wilmot clinical researchers have been leaders in developing treatments such as immunotherapies for lymphoma and other blood cancers. In 2014, the American Society of Clinical Oncology polled its members nationwide, asking them to identify the top five advances in treating cancer over the past 50 years. Two of these top five advances occurred at the University of Rochester. One is the HPV vaccine for prevention of cervical cancer, as well now as head and neck cancer. And the other is the development of anti-nausea drugs which have dramatically improved quality of life for patients undergoing treatment. These drugs and the entire field of cancer survivorship are due largely to the work of Gary Morrill and his colleagues here at Wilmot. That work is being recognized today and here to share that exciting news Dr. Jonathan Friedberg, Director of the Wilmot Cancer Institute. Thank you so much, Mark. And I also would like to thank uh, Congressman Morelli for being here, but also for his steadfast support. Uh, he's been very vocal about uh, his family's struggle with cancer, and he's passionate to our mission of discovering cure of that disease. And I also would like to just mention Gary Morrow, this name that you're going to keep hearing, because over the past 40 years, this is an individual who has really helped to create a field of supportive care research. Uh, he was transformational in really bringing this to people's attention and focusing on not only curing cancer, but also the experience that the patient goes through when they are sick with cancer. And that's really, um, something that other people 40 years ago were not focused on. And he, together with a small group of investigators, really created this field. And it's really become an important part of what we do today. So what I'm pleased to announce today is that the National Cancer Institute has awarded our cancer control program with $29 million grant. 
to advance its work as a U.S. research hub for trials in supportive care research. So to put this in perspective, $29 million currently is the largest grant at the University of Rochester Medical Center. And it's this team, based in this building, uh, interacting with our team at Wilmot Cancer Center across the street that is responsible for this. Uh, as exciting as it is to have the money come to Rochester, what's more exciting is the impact that this grant will have on patients in the future. This funding is going to be used for a variety of things, but to develop new treatments to help patients survive cancer and thrive after cancer. Focused on things like fatigue, nausea, neuropathy, and cognitive problems that happen with treatment and ways to overcome those problems. Historically, our team, led by Gary Morrow, has been leaders in this area. And with this grant, we're going to continue to be leaders and really form the care paradigms that um, all people will get in the United States in the future. And it really uh, comes to our core mission of research and what differentiates us from any other cancer institute in the region is the ability to do projects like this, study patients, and then move very quickly into the clinic, including into our integrative oncology program based at our Pluto location. So you're gonna hear a bit more about what this work is, uh, but before that, I wanna introduce Congressman Morelli for a few remarks. Good morning, um, first of all, Thank you to, uh, to Mark and Jonathan for their exemplary leadership of this facility, of this um, great undertaking that, that, that we're all a part of. And I don't think you could ask for two more, um, certainly two more uh, accomplished individuals, two people who are more passionate about the work, uh, not only in this community, but all their patients. And I'd like to just uh, thank them again for all the incredible work they do. Mark and Jonathan. I'd also like to thank all the people here. Um, you're the reason uh, that we're here. It's, it's uh, always, um, I think, gratifying to be able to get dollars from state or federal government if you're a legislator. Um, and uh, I was thinking about this building when we built it with a significant amount of state support uh, because we knew how important this was to the region, but more important to the patients you all serve. But it's the work that you do day in and day out which uh, makes this even possible. So. Could you give yourselves a big round of applause? All the staff. <laughs> so I was particularly excited uh, to, to learn of the award of the National Cancer Institute, $29 million for the university. Uh, and it's incredible work here. And I really want to thank Karen and Gary for their leading uh, work on this. This is uh, really amazing to be able to talk about, certainly, the kind of treatment that people get is, is vitally important. But those who, of us who have lived with people uh, who suffer with cancer know that the challenge is uh, not only in facing the disease, and, uh, but it's facing the impacts of the treatment, it's living life to the fullest uh, while you struggle with disease and treatment. My daughter, who had a rather odd sense of humor, would call the things that she received, such as massage or acupuncture, the cancer dividend. She'd say, all these good things for having cancer. It was a little odd way of looking at it, but that's, that was my daughter. Um, but it's really important, all the things that uh, you talk about, the neuropathy and you know, what they call chemo brain and uh, the impacts of radiation and, and surgery and, and all of that, um, having people devoted to making certain that the people lead the fullest life that they can and doing the research on it and how well it helps you in terms of um, not only living through treatment, but survivability and it helps in terms of all the things that uh, make it up. So um, $28 million, this is uh, nearly $5 million a year for the next, um, the next six years. Uh, in the lead uh, across the country in this incredible research, incredible work that you all do, um, and you truly impact people's lives. Um, you know, we all have so many days on this planet never know how long it's going to be or how short it's going to be. Uh, but when you face a diagnosis like cancer, you suddenly think about all the, the horrible things that uh, potentially await you. And, and I think fear is the first thing. I remember talking to Jonathan the day that my daughter was uh, diagnosed. And the fear that you feel, but 
whatever time you have, you want to live it to the fullest. And the incredible work that you're doing, the work that this grant will do, uh, it means uh, that for thousands, maybe tens of thousands, maybe millions of people, their lives are going to be enriched uh, immeasurably by the work you do, by the research you do, by what this grant does. So I'm eternally grateful to all of you for the incredible work that you do. And I just want to wish you Godspeed. Thank you. So good morning, my name is Dr. Karen Mushton and I'm the co-principal investigator of our $29 million grant that we received at the University of Rochester in order to conduct supportive care research with patients in New York and across the United States. My co-partner in crime and principal investigator is Dr. Gary Moreau and I've been working with Gary for 16 years as a member of the cancer control team. It's a great honor for me to stand here today with my family watching from around the country, all of you, and the excellent team we have here at Wilmot and in Cancer Control. I want to extend my sincere and heartfelt thanks to all the staff and faculty that work so hard on this grant. It's the work that you do every day that makes this happen, and without you, we simply would not have this grant. Time mentor and co-principal investigator, Dr. Gary Morrow. He started our cancer control research program more than 40 years ago here at the University of Rochester. Without him, I wouldn't be doing this work today and we wouldn't have this grant. Thank you, Gary. I know that you can't be here today and you are here with us in spirit, but our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family today. Many of you know that one of Dr. Morrow's favorite phrases is we help good people through lousy times when they experience cancer. Cancer treatment is not a walk in the park, and Gary actually knows this firsthand. While he's unable to be here and celebrate this due to an emergency surgery that he had yesterday, he is here with us in spirit and our gratitude support him and his family. I assure you that Gary's legacy will live on in the amazing scientists that he's trained who will actually put this grant to good use. I also can't help but think about my family today. My father was recently diagnosed with colon cancer and had miraculous treatment that would not have been available to him 20 years ago. I also think about my grandmothers. They both died of cancer in the 1990s, when there was very little recognition that it was important to help people live their best lives with this disease. My grandmother who had brain cancer underwent many difficult radiation treatments. My grandmother with breast cancer underwent a great deal of chemotherapy. At that time, no one was ever asking, how is this treatment affecting your cognition? How is this treatment affecting your infections? How is this treatment making you feel? Are you tired or weak? Can you do the things you want to do? It seemed to us and my family that the goal was to buy them another day at any cost. And while we loved having more time with them, I watched them and my family members suffer. And no one was asking the caregivers the important questions either. How is this affecting you? your physical function, your health, your well-being. We all wished at this point we could ease their suffering and the burden of their treatment. I'm happy to say that in the last 20 years, our work and the work by the scientists here at Wilmot have begun to change the course of treatment and fill this niche and improve the lives of patients as they live with cancer. We're focused on developing solutions so that people don't have to suffer. We've already made great strides. As you've heard, Gary's work helped oncologists to understand why some people develop severe nausea and vomiting due to chemotherapy, and helped with the development of the drugs that we have today in order to ward off these terrible side effects. 
This work changed the landscape of cancer care forever. My own research has focused on exercise during cancer. When I first started in the field, cancer patients were usually told to go home and take it easy. Today we find through research that patients actually do better when they move. They don't have to go out and run a marathon, but if they actually walk or do some gentle yoga or strength training, it can help reduce these toxic side effects like fatigue, infections, anxiety, depression, and improve their overall survival. Our colleague, Dr. Supriya Mohile, has led a burgeoning field of research on cancer and aging. Her group has taught us to think about a person's functional age rather than the simple number of birthdays that they've had, and to take that into account when planning treatments. All of this work has transformed the care of cancer patients here in New York and across the United States. Our team has helped to actually write new guidelines used every day by oncologists in the United States when treating patients. And this new $29 million grant that supports our NCI-funded and for research base will help us advance those efforts. Wow, some people might actually ask, what are you gonna do with $29 million? Well, the best part that's really exciting today is what's coming in the future. We have a lot of exciting opportunities. For example, Dr. Ian Kleckner is going to be studying how exercise can help treat chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy. Dr. Jen Gawanter is going to be studying how a TENS unit can also help mitigate this horrible side effect of neuropathy. Dr. Ruth Papone will be looking at the use of nutraceuticals for cancer-related fatigue. Dr. Charlie Kamen will be looking at how providers can communicate better with their sexual and gender minority patients. And Dr. Michelle Janelson will be looking at the role of genetics and epigenetics in the development of cognitive impairment. Let me close by saying one of Gary's favorite lines. We help good people through lousy times when they experience cancer. Thanks to this grant, we will continue to have a tremendous influence in the lives of our patients in upstate New York and across the country. Thank you.